Hello, hope you're having a wonderful night. I certainly am. I'm lying here on my sofa, ever the professional, uh, with my Sugar Puffs t-shirt. Hope you're enjoying my fashion. Um, but I'm here with Cody Monkey Vatel, who's over there having a little snooze, and Mishka, who's in a weird position, sleeping on the sofa as well. She was chewing a bone, but I think that got a bit too much hard work for her, so she's decided to fall asleep. Um, so I thought this would be a good time to... Um, touch upon the topic of dominance. Um, does allowing your dogs in the furniture m increase their dominance or make them uh, more aggressive? And we also hear things like, uh, you should eat before you feed your dog. You should walk away, uh, you should walk through doorways before your dog so they understand that you're the pack leader. Well, the short answer is you really have to not worry about any of that stuff because actually it's outdated information and it's no, it's not really true. I used to think like that. Um, I was taught to think or believe that um, you have to be dominant because that's how wolves live and that's how dogs live. But actually, the more we learn about dogs and wolves, we learn that's not how they live. Um, it's more of a family unit with a breeding male, breeding female, um, the puppies and the lazy teenagers who haven't left home yet. And really, it's not about um, lots of conflict. It's about in a social group of animals that live socially, it's about reducing conflict. So dogs work very hard to reduce conflict amongst them rather than um, kind of go, I'm the alpha and I'm going to use uh, conflict to um, sort of manage the group. And so when we're living with our dogs, really, we don't need to have force and conflict to manage them. And also, uh, we can let our dogs on the furniture and enjoy a Netflix and chill session with them and not feel guilty about it. And we don't have to worry, it's not going to make our dogs dominant or anything like that. Even if you have a dog who growls at you when um, you try and get them off the sofa, maybe we just need to teach them a nice way to come off the sofa. So with my dogs, I've taught them with a treat. If you come off the sofa when I ask you to, lots of good things happen on the floor. If you haven't heard about my counting game, have a look um, on YouTube for my counting game. And you can use a counting game to teach the dog to come off the sofa. And so um, basically, if we just motivate the dog in a nice way to come off when we ask them to, they'll be like, sure, I'll come off the sofa because it's worthwhile. And a lot of dogs come on the sofa because it's comfortable. Um, it's a nice place to chill. And also it's where we, we are, where it's where we sit. It's all our skin cells fall off. And so it smells of us. Um, it might be a bit warmer. Uh, Cody's 14 and he's got arthritis. And so it's probably a comfortable place for him to sleep. And so dogs go on the sofa, not because they're trying to be pack leaders, but often because it's just the most comfortable place for them to be. Uh, also, I mentioned the food bowls and the doorways. Um, again, you can feed your dog before you eat. It doesn't make them more dominant. Dogs don't go around living their life thinking, how do I become pack leader? Um, and also, if we think about it, how many dogs in the wild do you know that go around saying to the other dogs, you're not allowed on the sofa because um, I'm the pack leader, I go on there, or um, wait, because I'm the pack leader, I walk through doorways first, or I eat our food bowls first. It doesn't happen because dogs in the wild don't know what food bowls are. They don't know what sofas are. They don't know what doorways are. And these are human made up things that we kind of um, like portray on the dogs. And so it's not how dogs work or live around each other. And also, even if we like, um, we like if we think about it, we already control the most crucial parts of our dog's life. We control if they get to eat. We control what food they get. We control when they get that food. We control if they have access to water. We control if they get to reproduce. We control if they have access to safe places. We control if um, our dogs get social companionship. So we essentially control nearly everything that's most important to a living uh, being, a living creature's life. So why would letting our dogs not or letting them on the furniture make a difference? You really don't have to worry about trying to be pack leader when living with dogs because we already control most of their life. If anything, I would say, think about how can we empower our dogs? How can we give control back to our dogs? Because we control so many of their, uh, so much of their lives and they're living creatures. They have emotions and feelings um, just like us. And so uh, rather than trying to control them even more, how can we help them feel empowered? Um, that's the real um, sort of way of being a great trainer or focusing on do uh, living with dogs as opposed to going, how can I control them even more? So you can definitely go and enjoy a Netflix and chill session with your dog without feeling guilty. Um, enjoy cuddling up with your dog. If you'd like them to come off the sofa, 
teach them that. If you don't want your dog on the furniture, that's completely okay too. You don't have to have them on the furniture. Um, if you wanna walk out of a doorway before your dog because it's safer um, or it just helps uh, maintain some kind of um, sort of like safety, then that's perfectly fine. But don't do it because um, you've heard or you've read or so a trainer's told you that you have to do it because of dominance because that's not true. Um, and so, yeah, um, hopefully that was a little bit enlightening for you. Um, and um, 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 enjoy your life. Bye.